Fox News alert to frightening developments out of Syria at this hour. We are hearing reports that the regime has begun moving chemical weapons. A senior defense official quoted as saying the activity started in just the last few days and seconds ago, a strong warning directly from the White House. Welcome to America Live, everyone. I'm Megyn Kelly. Earlier today, Secretary of State Clinton publicly warned Bashar Assad's regime not to use chemical weapons on their own people or the United States will be forced to act. This comes after a weekend of terrible violence in Syria. This is video we received on Saturday. Small towns being bombarded by government mortars and missiles, sending innocent families, women and small children once again running for their lives. A short time ago, the United Nations announced it is withdrawing all non-essential personnel from that country as the possible threat of chemical warfare now looms. Look at these families. Look at this. Along with an active chemical weapons program, Syria has ballistic missiles to spread the deadly gas. It is believed to be one of the world's largest programs. According to the CIA, the regime has vast amounts of mustard gas, sarin nerve agent, and cyanide, all designed to cause painful death. This from the White House briefing moments ago. As the opposition makes strategic advances and grows in strength, the Assad regime has been unable to halt the opposition's progress through conventional means. And we are concerned that in an increasingly beleaguered regime, having found its escalation of violence through conventional means inadequate, might be considering the use of chemical weapons against the Syrian people. And as the president has said, any use or proliferation of chemical weapons by the Syrian regime would cross a red line for the United States. Joining me now, John Bolton, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations and a Fox News contributor. Ambassador, welcome back. Uh, this situation seems to be going from bad to worse in Syria. And, and Assad continues the massacre of his own people. And now we are supposed to believe, as things continue spiraling downward in that nation, that what we're supposed to trust him that he won't do it as as he feels his grip on power loosening well i think it's entirely possible that assad would use chemical weapons especially if he thinks it's that or the collapse of his regime there there are other less threatening explanations he's just moving the weapons or the agent uh, out of range of the opposition or he's preparing for an enclave strategy if the country itself falls apart uh, but you know the united states and western options are uh, kind of difficult here since if uh, if Assad does begun, begin to use the chemical agent uh, our people on the ground would be at risk and it's it's hard to see exactly what the administration is planning so whether its threat uh, actually moves Assad to change his policy is uh, is hard to judge at this point look at this look at these children running running for their lives and we've seen this I mean I I'm I'm just disgusted by how many times we've seen this, Ambassador Bolton. If I get one more report about a child being tortured to death in Syria, children, children are being tortured and, and killed by this regime. Uh, and, not, and now we've had al-Qaeda ex exploiting the power vacuum and doing killing of its own. But now you got reports that, that there are, quote, worrying signs of activity when it comes to these chemical weapons in the last few days. And you tell me what the United States is going to do if this lunatic is about to unleash sarin nerve gas on these kids. Yeah. Well, of course, we have seen regimes in the Middle East use chemical weapons against their own people. Saddam Hussein used it against the Kurds in Iraq. Uh, Amnesty International has reported years ago that Hafez al-Assad, Bashar al-Assad's father, used chemical weapons uh, in the Hama massacre some decades ago. So, uh, again, it's not at all surprising. And I have to say, the administration must have uh, pretty concrete intelligence that uh, Assad is doing things that make it possible for him to use these weapons. But as, as you also indicated, the opposition's record on human rights violations isn't exactly sterling and I would worry that uh, if they get their hands on the chemical weapons uh, at least some of them the al-Qaeda sympathizers in particular might use them in Syria or might take them away for terrorist use elsewhere mm. so it is a very very dangerous situation there's no doubt about that right there's few and f fewer and fewer noble players over there it started as you know sort of real people who didn't want to be under this man's thumb uh, in every manner of their lives anymore, but it's become something very different as, as Al-Qaeda and other terrorists have, have sought to take advantage of the, of the unrest there. Ambassador, 
What could we do? I mean, if we really think he's about to use chemical weapons, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but if we're getting this concerned about it and we're saying that's a red line, that was Hillary Clinton's term, what does that mean? Well, uh, for American options, uh, I think they're actually fairly limited and they're all dangerous. So one is to destroy the chemical weapons in place, whether through aerial attack or, or uh, special operations forces on the ground. That obviously puts people at risk. It's not easy to destroy this agent or these weapons. Uh, the other would be to try and capture supplies of the weapons and get them out of the country. That's also very dangerous in the middle of a, of a civil war. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a very dicey proposition for the United States and I believe other NATO countries and neighboring states like Turkey and Jordan that, uh, that may be involved as well. It's very late to be worrying about this at this point. What of NATO? I mean, this, this has to be something that would get the attention of the international community and not just America. Well, I think the Turks are already very worried, the Jordanians and Israelis as well. I think in cooperation with France and Britain and perhaps other NATO countries, we have clearly been planning for contingency operations, and it may simply be that whatever it is that the administration has uncovered about what Assad is doing with his chemical weapons stockpiles, we're at the point where a decision is going to have to be made. I mean, if they're really that worried, uh, I don't think we should wait until Assad starts using them. We have to consider doing something to prevent their use, because uh, if he unleashes chemical weapons against the opposition, uh, and he eventually falls, the prospects of an opposition bloodbath, which are already very high, uh, I think become overwhelming. Before I let you go, just, just to reiterate, you don't think that Bashar Assad is incapable of this? I mean, you believe he's capable of it, because when I speak of the torture, we, we've done reports on, you know, the bodies lined up one after the other, people with their arms tied behind their back, just murdered in cold blood, and, and children, nine-year-olds being shot in the head, as their parents watch and then other children made to watch as their parents are, are murdered in front of them and babies. I mean, the reports go on and on and are too gruesome for 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Ambassador. But just so our viewers know, you believe this man is capable of unleashing chemical weaponry, weaponry on his own people. Oh, absolutely. I don't think he would hesitate if he thought it was that or the end of his regime and his end as well. I think it would be second nature to him. Ambassador Bolton, thanks for being here. Thank you.